All right. Now oh, I got to figure out why my camera's not working. <laughs> uh. Bear with me here a minute, folks. Don't know why. Why it doesn't want to recognize my webcam. Let's All right, give me a minute here, guys. I gotta figure this out. Let's see why it doesn't want to recognize me all of a sudden. Oh, hey, I think it's working. Hi, everybody. Hope you all can see that okay. All right, bear with me one sec.
All right. Well, it looks like we've got video. Right. I hope. <laughs> All right, and Jeremy, I assume you can hear me, right? Okay, good, you can hear me. All right, well, then I'm just gonna dive in. Hopefully other people show up real quick. Throw up another post on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> and one more quick post. All right, well, let's get into it. So trying out something new here, doing uh, these little live streams. This is kind of our first attempt. Uh, so I apologize if the lighting and the sound isn't super great. Still working out how everything sounds and looks in the new apartment. But anyway, we're building some Lego. This is the uh, Lego Creator Space Shuttle. Uh, got this as a birthday present from Ashley. Uh, this is a three-in-one kit. Pretty cool. You can build like a little like lunar base or a moon buggy, but who the hell are we kidding? We're building a space shuttle. So let's go ahead and tear this puppy open, in theory. This will show you how ill-prepared I was. I totally forgot about the tape that holds these stupid things shut. And hopefully people enjoy this enough that they are willing to come back for more. You'll probably hear my phone going off for a couple of times. I've just got the stuff going on. So, go. Uh, if you have a little trouble hearing me over the, uh, the air conditioner, let me know. It's, again, not something I've had to deal with in videos yet. Alright, so let's get our instructions out here. Let's see, there's the space shuttle. That's the one we want. Let's see what we need to do. All right. So I hope everybody's having a good day. So it looks like these, if I remember correctly, the creator sets aren't numbered. You kind of just rip and tear and pour everything out. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to start with this bag because it has the uh, the bits to the astronaut in it. That's always 
step one on these things. Really should have had a knife handy, but or scissors or something. Basically, I should have been prepared, but yeah, hell with that. All right, so we're gonna build our little astronaut man here. Just readjust the camera real quick. Oh, are not all of his parts in here? Oh no! All right, well, we've got his head and part of his helmet, so I guess we rip and tear the rest of these guys. All right, well, I'm gonna find... There's the rest of you, buddy. We found you. It's okay. Let's back over here. So, I'm pretty excited. We just moved into our new apartment uh, at the beginning of the month, and we've finally gotten it put together in such a way that uh, we are content to show it off. Uh, we finally got our dining room set up enough that I can build stuff out here, or stream stuff, or do whatever I want to do. Now I've got to find, find your backpack bit here. Which, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be wicked pissed if it's in another bag. <laughs> yep, yeah, sure enough, there it is, in this bag. Is this visor in here too? Is this visor clear? God, just bits everywhere for the, for the astronaut. Alrighty. So I guess we'll pour out this bag as well. That's the one thing I will say I like about the bigger kits that uh, hopefully we'll get to in a stream one day is that they are numbered bags. Makes it a lot easier to find the part you're looking for. Uh, so like right now He's missing the visor on his helmet. So I'll just go ahead and put his helmet on. Try not to focus too well. My camera's not great, admittedly. I do apologize about that. Um, I don't know where the hell his visor is. <laughs> it's, it's in a bag somewhere. Um, so I'll stumble across it at some point. Alright, let's see here. So next step is I want one of... no? I want one of these. Yeah. And... Alright, so I want that. I will admit, this isn't my <laughs> setup super great. Ah, there you are. Alright, this bad boy snaps onto here. And then this whole thing snaps onto his back. Building him a little, little jetpack. Back heavy. Ah, yes, and then this piece. You know, I remember building Lego as a kid. And this piece here was always one of my favorites because it always looked like a little, like, double barrel laser gun. Even when that was very expressly not the intent of the set, I was always like, dude, it's got a laser cannon! And uh, thankfully my brother didn't make fun of me too much for it. Alright, let's see here. I need parts that are probably in another bag. Out in there. Sorry if I bumped the camera, by the way. I'm still, you know, still trying to figure out a good setup. So, right, should be gray. Is it these guys? 
this guy. All right. So now comes the fun part: finding the other one. The thing for me about Lego that always excites me is it's more the end product. I mean, the building is fun, but I love seeing the thing at the end. Well, I'm going to go ahead and snap this one on. Some wrenches in here, right? Did I take his wrench out? I swear it's in this bag. Oh, hey, there's his visor. <laughs> and his wrench. Okay. All right, so I guess we do want to open this bag if we want to complete our Lego man. But I always thought it was really cool seeing the stuff that uh, that the Lego people come up with. Uh, now you got a lot of like licensed kits, which are fine. I mean, we have. That's not on, right? It's been a while since I built a Lego man with a space helmet. There we go. There we go. Uh, this guy, by the way, does have a second face. If you want to be terrified, but I'm not going to do that. I am, however, going to try and find this other bit. Um, but anyway, yeah, you've got a bunch of these licensed sets now, which are cool. I mean, I've got a bunch of them. Uh, we've got a bunch of Star Wars ones, a couple of um, Guardians of the Galaxy ones. So we have, uh, we built one of the Guardians kits already. He comes with a second visor? What the hell? Um, and it was cool. It's fun. But... And, you know, building, like, an ATST is always fun. And we definitely, you know, we've got an X-Wing in our closet that we still need to, to build. And by we, I mean me and Ashley. Um, it's actually Ashley's X-Wing, so got to get her to sit down and put that bad boy together sometime. There you are. Boom! Little spaceman with his jetpack. So we're just going to go ahead and sit you right on over here off camera. Now we're getting in the middle. Oh, that's a big bag. Um, but there's always something to be said about the original stuff. And a lot of the time, for me... Right, yes. All right. I'm going to move all this over here. That way. I'm not reaching across my table all the time. And we've got more room on the table for camera space. Oh, yeah. Okay. This guy. Little flat tan piece. Um, but, yeah, Lego has always, always been really cool. I grew up on uh, stuff like, uh, like the old space kits, like Mtron or... Blacktron and Mtron, I think they were called. Um, but I also grew up on like Ice Planet, and there was one. There was one when I was younger, and somebody, please feel free to uh, remind me of the title. But it was this really cool, like Aquanauts, I think, is what it was called. But anyway, it had like a bunch of cool, uh, like submarines and stuff and I had this one that was this big yellow submarine had like arms and looked like something straight out of like <laughs> Outlaw's Star which of course at that time I didn't know what the hell Outlaw's Star was I'd never even heard of it um, but yeah I, I love that sort of stuff because it's just it's kind of brilliant really you know when you think about it the way these people come up with these things. But 
I'm always going to be a sucker for some of the license kits. Like Star Wars, I'm always going to be a sucker for. Um, but I do really love these creator kits because you get the option on how you want to build them. And at the same time, I love just some of the cool stuff they do. Uh, I've got a bunch of the city kits as well that I'll probably build at some point. Some of these bigger pieces out of my way. And let's see, that was six on a black. That would be you. And then. No. <laughs> it's already begun. Um, anyway, to keep myself distracted while I look for this part, I really do dig those kits. Um, like people look at me weird and they're like, why would you buy the city kits when you got all the cool, like, Star Wars stuff and, uh, you know, all the, the, the superhero stuff. And while that stuff is cool, there is something to be said for just building, like, a real life sort of thing. Um... Because, you know, it's fun to build an ATST. It's fun to build the Arbalist. It's... Or not the Arbalist, the uh, Milano. It's fun to build uh, the Millennium Falcon, the Next Wing, and uh, you know, build the Batmobile and stuff like that. But there's something to be said about building a space shuttle, or building a uh, like I have like a, a fishing boat <laughs> and a little like camper that are totally unassuming. But I absolutely adore them because they are just neat little things. They're just kind of cool, real-world little little things. And I it's kind of relaxing. You know, when you're building something like an X-Wing, it's like, okay, well, it has to look a very specific way or, or it's just it's, it, it's not going to look any good. Um, but, you know, you can kind of add your own spin on to some stuff from, like, the city line. But, again, a lot of it's just, you know, sometimes you just want to build something real. You want to build something that you'll actually see out on the street. This is kind of coming along. It's a multicolored chunk. All right. No. Yeah. Oh goody, my favorite part. Tiny little wings that have to be uh, opposite directions of each other. Oh, I will say, while I do love building Lego, sometimes it is a tremendous, tremendous pain in the ass uh, when there's like 600 parts that are nearly identical, but they're only ever so slightly different in the fact that uh, like they're one stud length difference. Uh, you know, like, you got this long black bar, you've got this short black bar, I'm sure there's other lengths, yeah, here's a, here's an even shorter black bar, so, sometimes it's, it's kind of annoying, but it's all fun, I still enjoy it, <laughs> just when you're trying to dig through a giant pile, it becomes a little bit tedious, I'm gonna move you guys out of the way. I know what you are. All right. But I will say the one thing that has never bothered me about Lego has been like getting defective kits. I've never had one that didn't have all the parts or somehow didn't come out looking right outside of user error. Right, there we go. Oh, we're moving on a good clip. We're on page 10 of 74. All right. He's done with this by dinner time. <laughs> uh, 
I miss the Lego of my youth, though. I really, I do love those kits. I wish they would bring them back, like do a retro collection and bring back like Emtron and Blacktron and uh, the, the the Aquaworld. Aquanauts or whatever the hell they were called. I think it'd be really cool if they brought those back. I would buy them in a heartbeat. Ashley would be so pissed. We'd be so broke. Be evicted from this apartment. In no time flat. <laughs> oh yeah, we got wings. All right. And we're done. There's your spatial. All right. Let's see here. Sorry. <laughs> Flip it over. Oh, this is going to be fun. Now I have to figure out exactly how many studs in I have to go to put on these little, these little gray nubbins. <laughs> but yeah, I do wish they would bring back the, the Lego of my youth. It'd be really cool. It'd be a nice little nostalgia trip. Um, I intend to have some Lego at my work desk, but uh, it'll probably be little stuff. Probably won't be like the space, you know, my space shuttle here. And if people enjoy this enough and uh, want more, there we are. I'll be more than glad to uh, live share. So it looks like we're over three. Over. That's what the instructions look like. All right, flip back over. So, if people enjoy this, I will obviously keep doing it. Uh, I've got a ton of kits to build, um, including I've got one. I got two more creator kits that are these three in ones. It's, uh, like an Arctic helicopter that you get to build a little like snow buggy mobile thing out of. I don't really know my Arctic vehicles. <laughs> um, but anyway, it comes with a cool little like tracked vehicle that you get to build along with the helicopter and then I've got another one that's a like a cool little like dual engine propellered airplane um, the people who are far smarter and more knowledgeable about Lego than I am probably know exactly what I'm talking about at least I hope they do so I don't sound like a complete ass but they are they're cool, and I want to build them, and I figure this is a good way to actually get me to build them. Gives me an excuse to sit down and do it, and, you know, hang out and chat and dilly-dally and all that fun stuff. Alright. Um, but I also have... We do have the Milano from Guardians of the Galaxy. I've also got another Guardians kit that I need to build. Uh, as well as <clears throat> I've got my two city kits. I've got a fishing boat and like a little camper, like a little uh, camper trailer. I'm really excited about that. Uh, and then I've got my Saturn V, my massive $120 rocket that was also a birthday present uh, from my wife. I need to build that at some point, but that is going to be a hell of an endeavor. All right. Speaking of endeavors, there was a space shuttle called Endeavor, if I remember correctly. Boom. Look at that segue. It's actually not a segue. That was me <laughs> struggling to find parts. All right. Let's see here. I need these. But yeah, I want to build the Saturn V. I was super excited. I was so excited when they announced it. I was just like, oh, 
this is a thing that I need in my life. And I could not justify buying it. And my, uh, both my mom and my wife, uh, they, they teamed up to buy it for me for my, uh, my birthday this year. So, um, that was really cool. It's still in the box. It's huge. It's like 1900 pieces or some such nonsense. Uh, when it's all built, it's like three and a half feet tall. It comes with little micro figures. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely insane. The size of that thing. And I'm so excited to build it. All right, let's see. These guys and this guy. All right, where do they go? This is one of those things about building with Lego. Is it always... It always seems a little, like, silly to build up some of this stuff. Like, you know, obviously you don't think of these because you're never really going to see them afterwards. And, like, some of this stuff you just build up and up and up and then you build over it and you never see it again. <laughs> um, but I suppose that's, that's part of the joy is... Uh, Building, building redundancies. All right, and then a little gray square. So in other news, uh, for those of you who are interested in miniatures wargaming, you may have seen a couple of companies this week, or this past week, uh, announced that they're closing their doors. Like, I mean, it's just insane. We had On The Lamb Games, uh, they announced it, then uh, Spartan Games, and then Tor Games, or Tor Miniatures, I guess, uh, all announced that they are closing up shop. They're all going out of business. And it's kind of sad. I mean, I'm going to really miss On the Lamb. I really, really loved uh, their Endless Fantasy Tactics game. Uh, Spartan, I'm going to miss because I, no matter how much I rag on them, I really do enjoy... Uh, Firestorm Armada and Dystopian Wars. I think they're both great games. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, in the near future grab some stuff for dirt cheap. Uh, one of my local shops here uh, in the Salt Lake area carries Spartan Games products and with Spartan going out of business I'm expecting them to just throw everything on wicked massive clearances. Uh, and I've got a buddy uh, up here who is interested in playing both Firestorm and Dystopian Wars, so hopefully we can uh, get in on that and grab some stuff for cheap. But yeah, it's it's been a crazy, crazy week. And shit, I put that on wrong. Oh no. All right, let's see if the old trick still works. It does not. All right, well, now i got to figure out how to get this thing off. <laughs> Nobody will notice this little uh, engineering issue. All right, give me a sec, guys. I've got a tool somewhere. Sorry about that. All right, well, it looks like we're doing it the old-fashioned way because I have no idea where my tool is. I'm just going to have to figure out how to pry this son of a bitch off. And I think that I'm going to regret the fact that I 
trimmed my nails this morning. All right. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> Spartan announced that they're going out of business. Um, which, again, if you read my post on the Facebook page, it uh, doesn't really surprise me. I always, I feel like they were stretching themselves too thin. I mean, they were working on, jeez, what, five, six games with a, a team big enough to maybe sustain three. Uh, they had Firestorm Armada, Dystopian Wars, Firestorm Planetfall. I think Dystopian Legions was already, like, defunct and dead. These guys. Uh, and then they had the two Halo games, which looked like perfectly serviceable games. I just didn't really have an interest in them. You know, i not a huge Halo fan to begin with, uh, and I definitely didn't care enough for the, the models to be like, oh, I really need to get on that. Um, because the thing with Halo is there's not enough factions, you know? It, it just feels like there's not enough there to offer variety. But, you know, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm kind of ignorant of how Halo works. Um, I played the games, you know, I was never a huge fan. But I'm not a big first-person shooter fan to begin with, so I'm I am incredibly biased uh, when it comes to video games, uh, which is why you will never see me play anything like uh, Overwatch, and why you will never hear me talking about it, <laughs> because I just don't care. Uh, I don't enjoy FPS games. I think they're boring and repetitive and and for the most part, I feel like they're kind of brain dead. I'm sure somebody is going to be wicked pissed that I said that. But, I mean, honestly, there's no actual consequence to dying in an FPS. So, I always just kind of feel like you don't have to use your brain to play it. And I'm sure there are FPSs out there where uh, you're rewarded for being intelligent. I feel like they're just far and few between or few and far between, or however you want to say it. Like, I played America's Army way back in the day. I bought that. Um, and the appeal of that game to me was the fact that if you, if you fucked up, you died. You were dead. You were out for the rest of that match. There was no respawns. Nothing. So you had to be smart. Um, with how you did stuff. And I really liked that, but the thing I didn't like about the game, uh, well, there were two things I didn't like about the game. A, it was obvious, it was a really blatantly obvious recruitment device. Um, it was very America, fuck yeah. It was a lot of wankery, basically, <laughs> is what it comes down to. Um, it was a solid game, and I wish somebody had used the engine to do something cooler. But I, you know, I just I stopped playing it because it got I got to a point where it was like, oh, you know, I really want to like get some new stuff and kind of uh, you know get better gear. And it's like, oh, we'll just do this uh, this training camp mission in single player. And I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. And no, it it was not impossible. Uh, it was some some bullshit with the. Uh, parachuting and you had to like click a button like half a second before you would even think you would need to click the button and I just never got I tried it like 700 times and just couldn't do it so I just I said screw it it's not worth the effort it's not worth the the headache I'm getting trying to get past this uh, and you know I ended up realizing that most of the people who were playing weren't the kind of people that I wanted to be playing with anyway. And it was one of those sort of revolutionary moments for me where it was like, oh, hey, you know what? Playing video games online with people I don't know is not a good time. Uh, which is why I will never play P 
people I'm not in some way familiar with. Um, you know, there are people from like, uh, like I'm part of a, uh, the Utah Gamers Facebook group. Like, I'll play with them. That's fine. I don't play a lot of the games they play, but, you know, they're all playing Player Unknowns, Battlegrounds, and uh, Overwatch, and, and stuff like that. You know, stuff I'm never going to play. Oh, we're really coming together here. Um, so I, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, the few of them that do play the same kinds of games as me, um, I have no qualms playing with them. They're generally pretty cool people. I know them in some capacity in real life. And, uh, you know, I can easily just scroll through some of the posts on the group and pick out which ones are the massive dickheads and say, oh, okay, well, I'm not playing with you then. Go about my day. So, I've got that going. <laughs> but, yeah, I kind of came to the realization at that point that playing video games with people that I don't know just isn't for me. Um, there's also the, the fact that when you're playing a video game online, if somebody's being a total, just complete wanker, what are your options there? You, you can mute them? Ooh, that's a real... You really showed him. Um, which is one of the reasons I prefer tabletop gaming. Uh, obviously, there's certain games I don't play. Um, but I do prefer... Uh, tabletop over video for that reason. If somebody's being an asshole, I can tell them to their face to quit being an asshole. And if they keep being an asshole, I can just reach across the table and slap them. Um, so, there is that. Oh, God, I'm looking for that control panel piece. Uh, but, yeah, I... Because I've had people ask me, like, oh, well, you know, you could you could really up your viewership if you, there it is, uh, if you played, you know, this game or that game, you know, oh, if you guys would stream some Overwatch or Player Unknown, I mean, those are really popular games. And yes, they are popular games. And, you know, if one of the other guys wants to stream those, more power to them. I will not be doing so. I just, those games hold no appeal to me. Absolutely none. Um, but, you know, I, I say that, and I also get a lot of people who, you know, are tabletop gamers who come on, oh, where are you? I just saw you like five seconds ago, <laughs> um, who I've talked to and they've been like, oh, you know, you could really boost your viewership and your, uh, your numbers and your subscript and your subscribers and all that if you did more stuff on like 40k and War Machine. And, you know, you're absolutely right. I could. But at the same time, I have zero interest in those games. So I'm not going to invest my money in them. There it is. Because uh, I think that's something that a lot... I don't know if it's, not, it's something that people don't realize or if it's just... Not something people necessarily think about. Did I? I did do that wrong. Uh, is that this channel, this whole organization, really, if you can call it that, is obviously something we just do for fun. Uh, we generally don't get stuff for free. Uh, you know, manufacturers and game companies generally don't send us much stuff for for free. I have a couple of friends in the industry, and I'm sure I could maybe convince them to send me a rule book to review. Um, and I've brought it up, and I've said, hey, you know, if you, you know, I, it'd be great, and I'd be super grateful if you did, but, you know, no pressure if you can't, because I understand you can't just give stuff away to free for everybody, you know, for free to everybody, especially, you know, to a, a small channel like ours that isn't super popular. But at the same time, another one of you. There we go.
uh, what's I saying? At the same time, uh, you know, it would be great if we could, but you know, we don't. We don't get stuff for free. We we buy our stuff. <laughs> Did I miss a step? I absolutely did miss a step. Um, so yeah, I mean, we don't we don't get stuff for free. We don't get books or miniatures or anything like that, you know, from companies. Uh, we we buy it all. You know, this is an endeavor of love. It's kind of just a, a passion project for all of us. Um, do we try and make money off of it? You bet your ass we do. But at the same time, we understand that it's not our primary sources of income for any of us. Um, so, so you know, we're not we're not idiots. We don't think, oh, you know, we can we can totally just get everything for free and buy everything that's out there or whatever. Uh, we we know for a fact that we can't this back a little bit it's getting a little big but it, it brings up the point that you know I'm not going to pay for a rule book or miniatures for a game that doesn't excite me um, yeah I get 40k is the biggest game in the industry I think it's also the shittiest game in the industry um, so I'm not really interested in spending money on it and I've said time and time again if one of the other guys wants to do stuff for 40k they are more than welcome to uh, you know I don't make the the final rules on anything around here this is a collaborative thing that we all do together but you will never see me Spencer talking about uh, 40k or War Machine or even Infinity at this point I'm, I'm so burned out with some of these companies and I have no desire to give them my money now, if they want to send us stuff, or if uh, a fan wants to send us stuff, fine. <laughs> I won't turn down free stuff. Is that really how that goes? <laughs> just There's no hinge? <laughs> it just connects in there. Okay, well, apparently we're done with that part for the time being. Um, so yeah, I, there's certain stuff that I'm fully aware of we can do to increase viewership and I'm fully aware that there's stuff we can do to uh, increase our subscribers and the thing is I'm not going to spend money on it for for a no return and and somebody brought this up I told them this once I said well you know what I'm not going to spend money on a game I don't care about or a game that doesn't interest me. And they went, well, you buy these games on Kickstarter. And I said, yeah, I do. And they went, well, you don't know if that game's going to be good. You're going entirely off the word of the person making it. And I said, you're absolutely right. But I trust that person more than I trust companies like GW and privateer press and corvus belly at this point because that person hasn't burned me and i'm sure that's not the right part where is it aha i think that's how that goes <laughs> And hey, 10 bucks says we're going to do that all over again in a few steps here. Um, but anyway, the, the point being that, yeah, you know, I buy stuff on Kickstarter. I And some people might say I blindly throw money at Kickstarter, which isn't necessarily a, an untruth. <laughs> I've spent a lot of money on Kickstarter. But at the same time, I've had very few 
like burns on Kickstarter. Um, basically, everything I I've, I've gotten has come to me complete, um, and I understand that those the the deliveries they date they put in there is purely purely hypothetical. Why it tells you to do it that way? Um, so I'm not. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not too torn up about it. I know some people get really, really pissed when a Kickstarter goes beyond its stated delivery date. Like, oh, they said it was going to be delivered by the end of November. Like, dude, I am perfectly content with waiting, uh, you know, not even just a couple extra weeks. I'm, I'm content waiting extra months to make sure they get the product right. Where hell are these parts? Alright, there's the white one. There's the white one. <laughs> um, I mean, I've got stuff I'm still waiting on. I'm still waiting on uh, War Gods. I'm still waiting on... Uh, believe it or not, I'm still waiting on some stuff for Robotech. Oh, what a shock that is. Palladium's taking forever to do something. Uh, not bitter at all. What are you talking about? Um, I'm still waiting on a couple of things for Call of Cthulhu. I've got some like accessories and whatnot. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bugged that that's not hinged, but okay. I, I mean, it, I guess it makes sense. But that kind of sucks. You got to rip the whole top off to uh, to put it together there. All right, we're gonna build the ass end now. Um. But yeah, I mean, there's like I said, there's stuff I'm waiting for. I'm still waiting on. Uh, what else am I waiting on? Uh, I'm. I mean, I'm waiting for like Mutant Chronicle. You know, Siege of the Citadel. Uh, there's Mechton Zero. I think it is. Um, I'm still waiting on that. Um, and the thing is, I've had very few cases where I've ever been led to believe that I've been swindled out of my money on a Kickstarter. The only one where I have felt that way has been Robotech, because it has been such an unmitigated disaster. And Palladium has just sat around with their thumbs up their asses for what seems like the entirety of this project. And there were others. I mean, I know people who were super pissed that, you know, Mercs uh, took as long as it did. But at the same time, I'm really glad that they took their time because they were getting screwed over by the casting company. Sorry, make sure I was doing this right. Um, but anyway, yeah, Mercs, Megacon Games is getting getting the runaround from the, the company in China that was doing all the casting for them. So I'm not too torn up that that one took as long as it did. And you know what? I'm, I'm okay with having waited because it came out really, really, really good. Um, so I'm not particularly bothered. Is there any four of these? Oh, okay. Two on each. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I've been waiting a long time for War Gods. Like, longer than I would have liked. I, I do feel like I maybe should have that in my hands already. But nothing to the point where I've ever been, like, demanding my money back. It was tempting. I mean, real, real tempting with Robotech to ask for my money back. But... And, you know, there's a part of me that now is like, look, I'm never going to play it. Um, you know, it's not a bad game, but I'm just... 
don't have the interest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. And they spin. It's hard to tell on camera. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, I've I've always felt like like that was the only one I ever felt kind of gypped on. So maybe I'm maybe I'm a dreamer. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, while there's still stuff I'm waiting on from other ones, I've never felt like I needed to demand my money. Excuse me. You know, I've never felt the need to contact the company and be like, hey, you're, you're taking too long. Give me my money back. Um, cause the thing is, I think the thing that people forget about Kickstarters is if you're actually expecting it on the exact day that the company is saying it should be delivered on, then you are only lying to yourself. Um, like maybe when Kickstarter was first starting up, um, I could understand people believing that because we didn't know better. But at this point, if you don't add at least six months onto that time frame, you're delusional. <laughs> and I say that as somebody who really does like Kickstarter. Uh, I've gotten a lot of really cool games off of Kickstarter. But the simple fact of the matter is, there's no way they ever deliver on time. <laughs> But again, if they're going to use that time to make sure that their product is actually good and worthwhile, then, you know, take that extra time. I don't care. All right. This is starting to come along, sort of. Got a cockpit, got some boosters. And just like that, we're building something else. Uh, there was something else. What was it gonna? What was I gonna say? Uh, not in regards to Kickstarter, but just sort of in general. Um, it's completely gone now. Uh, but speaking of Kickstarter, there is some cool stuff that may or may not still be up on Kickstarter. <laughs> I haven't looked recently. Um, there's there's been stuff I've wanted to pledge to and I just can't justify doing so. Uh, I was actually pledging to Wild West Exodus, the original Kickstarter they did, uh, but I had to drop out because I just didn't have the money. Which is funny because like three months later or something, I think uh, Merck's uh, Recon Kickstarter launched and I think I spent like $250 on that. <laughs> um, but man, I know some people who go all out i mean just absolutely hardcore like all their money how did i lose that part there it is um like i've known people who have spent like a thousand plus dollars on a single kickstarter i think mercs either mercs recon or warzone resurrection are probably the two i spent the most money on uh, mercs was like 250 Something like that. And I think Warzone, after currency exchanges, was close to 300, if not over 300. Uh, but at that time, I was working at Blue Table, and it was before Sean decided to change all of our pay styles and uh, you know kind of screw everybody over. Or let me rephrase that, screw over everybody that wasn't him. Um, am I doing that right? Yeah. All right, now, this, all right, I didn't do that on camera, sorry, but uh, this whole thing snapped over that assembly that was in here, that's pretty neat. I was wondering, because there was these, like, clamp bits underneath, and I was like, what the hell are they ever going to use those for? Why use them if you're not actually going to clamp anything in there but sure enough 
Um, but yeah, I've known people who spent a lot of money on Kickstarter. I am not one of them. I like I I know a guy who spent I think five or six hundred dollars on the first Reaper Bones, and he's like, dude, you should totally get in on this. I was like, what in the hell would I ever use those models for? Oh, am I stupid? I'm stupid. This is why you always read the instructions. Ooh, sorry about that. This is why you definitely read the instructions if you're going to build something live on camera. Prevents you from looking like quite as much of an ass. Although in my case, probably only minimally. <laughs> I just look like an ass either way. But, yeah, he's... It was funny because he was just like, oh man, I'm getting all these great models. Think of all the stuff you could get. I was like, yeah, but dude, what am I going to use them for? He's like, D&D. And I looked at him. I said, when was the last time you saw me play D&D? So, yeah, it was. <laughs> but yeah, man, people spent a lot of money on, on things like that. And I think there's certain ones that come out like, Bones, um, Toughest Girls in the Galaxy. I don't know how much Jeremy spent on that, but I know he spent a decent chunk of change. Um, but, like, people were super excited about that because, you know, it was Sisters of Battle stuff. It's not something I cared about. But people were super stoked about it. Spent a lot of money. I mean, you can look at some of the Kickstarters and you can see, like, <laughs> how many people pledged to certain levels. I think there was, geez, I can't remember what Kickstarter I was looking at, but there was a pledge level that was like, like $1,500 or something, and it was limited to five people, and all five of them were gone by the end of the Kickstarter. It's just like, damn, must be nice to have money. <laughs> This guy goes on here. But yeah, I'm... Most of the times I buy into a Kickstarter, I am buying into... Get a rule book. <laughs> because I'm a collector of rule books, if you've never noticed. There are tons of games that I will never, ever in my life get a chance to play. But I will own the rule book because... That's just how I am. Uh, I have rule books for games that, you know, obviously they don't make anymore. Ooh, yeah, it's a sexy ass. Although this feels like it wouldn't... Like, I get it's supposed to be stylized, but, like, the real space shuttle, their engines are all pointing the same direction. I feel like this wouldn't accomplish a whole lot. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. You know, uh, anybody out there who's a, a aerospace engineer can... Uh, Feel free to correct me on my ignorance. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm i usually in it to buy rule books. I have books for games that don't exist anymore that I've just found secondhand. Uh, like, I have a copy of a book for a game called Cowboy Wars. <laughs> it is just, I mean, grade A, like, late 80s, early 90s cheese. It's, it doesn't even look like it's a good game. Like I, I skimmed through the rules, and it's one of those games that's like, oh, well, to make an attack, you follow the, tw the following 14 steps. And it's like, dude, fuck that. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Um, and that's why I don't play, like, Osprey games. Um, they make cool games, like Ronin and... Uh, um, like Dragon Rampant and stuff, but the combat mechanics always feel clunky in those games to me. Oh, are we building? Oh, we are. Building a little, little satellite. Oh. Yeah. 
But I get that people really like Osprey games. Which, you know, if you do, more power to you. I'm not going to judge you. You're free to like whatever you want to like. Uh, I personally just don't really care all that much for them. Like, I read the rules for Ronin right after... Uh, uh, oh, God, what's it called? The... Crap. <laughs> um, whatever Warlords Samurai game they just recently put out is called... I, I'm drawing a blank on the title. But they're, like, I, I decided to download the rule book for Ronin, and I know I'm a dirty, dirty pirater, but I'm not going to buy the book uh, on the offhand chance that I might play it, which is kind of hypocritical considering everything I just said, but whatever. Uh, the point is, um, I, I downloaded it to take a look at it, thinking, well, if I end up liking it, I'll, you know, go out and buy it. And it just, it seemed kind of clunky and archaic, which have been two of my biggest complaints against Games Workshop. So I was like, well, you know, I think I'd better off spending my, my money on a samurai game and getting, uh, you know, getting whatever the hell Warlords is called. I can't believe I'm blanking this hard for honor and glory or something like that? I don't know. Um, oh, that's going to be that's gonna be wicked sweet when that's done. Alright. Anyway, the, the fact of the matter is I just didn't care for it. It was just too much crunch. Um... So it kind of lost me pretty quick. And I've tried looking at their other games, and you know, I've generally felt the same way about those. I'm sorry if I'm off camera here. A bit too much. But it, go on. <laughs> um, I took a look at it, and I just didn't really care for it. Um, but again, it's one of those things, that's kind of the joy of, of miniatures wargaming, especially right now, is you have so freaking many options that if there's a certain thing that appeals to you, you can find a game for it. Um, you know, we've got stuff for Samurai, and we've got, you know, stuff for Fantasy, we've got Stuff for sci-fi, we've got stuff for steampunk and diesel punk and are you ready? Ha ha ha. Yeah, buddy. It's a bit of a tight squeeze closing up. Um but yeah, I mean there's so many options, which is why it befuddles me that people are like, well, I play this one game. Dude, what are you doing with your life? Um, I get bored playing one game. If I play the same game more than like six times in a row, I end up burning out on it. Which is... Happened with War Machine for me. I, I played it a whole bunch because it's what people at my local shop at the time were playing. But I eventually got bit. Because I was just like, guys... Can we please, please play something else? Did I, did I do this wrong? No, I did not. I don't know if these are supposed to fold down like this. I assume they are in the instructions here. All right. All right. So we're almost there, folks. We're almost done. Um, but yeah, it it blows my mind. Like I can play now. I didn't just burn out on War Machine. I got really frustrated with Privateer Press. 
um, and just said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to play your game anymore. I'm not giving you any more of my money. I'm not going to sit here, having picked the faction I think looks coolest, just to have you go, oh, well, they're not a real faction. Play a real faction. Oh. Because, honestly, I have better shit to do. Like, no, I don't want to play Signar, because I don't like the way Signar looks. They've got some cool units, I'll admit. But, overall, I don't like the way they look. Alright, so apparently we're supposed to open up the bay here. And then these guys attach on like so. So, I mean, this is very clearly not a 100% real-world depiction of a space shuttle. Um, because obviously the space shuttle, A, the engines point the same way, and B, it doesn't have these like little wing flap rocket things. And space shuttle fits more than one person. But it's coming along. I'm super excited. Um, but anyway, back to my privateer press rant. I got tired of feeling like the army I picked because I played mercenaries. Because I was like, they got the coolest looking units I think um, and private and I went yeah they got steelheads and the steelheads look cool and their fluff is cool and yeah these guys sound badass and privateer press just kind of sat there and went oh well you know you could you could instead play a we're not gonna give steelheads more stuff you know mercenaries really stuff and then they came out with a whole like new mercenary sub <laughs> Which just pissed me off even more because I was like, dude, come on. You talk about in the fluff how the steelheads are like this huge mercenary house and have all this cool stuff and how they're such badasses. And you're like flat out blatantly ignoring them. Uh, and, you know, like, oh, well, who wants, who wants cool conquistador looking guys when you can have generic Body mon generic, you know, body horror monster men with with stitching all over them, and ooh, like the cell effects just <laughs> didn't do it for me. Uh, speaking of war machine factions that don't do it for me, uh, the Grinkin have had some releases, and man, talk about a hit or miss group of models. Um. Like, they are so just insanely inconsistent. Like, there's some stuff in there that looks really cool, and then there's other stuff that just looks completely and utterly stupid. Oh, what is this? Is this... Oh. Oh, baby. That's sweet. Nice and sturdy. And that's it. That's our space shuttle. All right. So we got our little astronaut man. Now we can take off his... This whole back unit here. And we can pop him in the cockpit. Close his helmet so he doesn't die. Of course, the problem now becomes: Is there room in the in the cargo bay for all of his stuff? And the answer, I think, is going to be a resounding no. And I am correct. <laughs> but check this out: You've got your little robotic arm, and it can even grab the the satellite. Boom! Dude, how cool is that? <laughs> I'm super excited with this. And you got this nice, heavy, ratcheting click here. That's, oh, that's awesome. 
That's got a good tight grip there. So that makes me happy. I love when stuff like this... Well, <laughs> I love stuff like this in general. But I love it when it all sort of comes together properly. So yeah, there's our LEGO Space Shuttle. I'm super happy to have gotten that done. Here's the bits of Astronaut Man's backpack. And his screwdriver, or spanner, as you uh, lovely British folks say. So anyway, guys, thanks, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, you, whether you live or you joined, uh, you watched the video afterwards. Uh, I'm going to do more of these in the future, hopefully. I'll probably start doing them on Wednesdays, uh, most likely like Wednesday afternoons, because um, I will now have Wednesdays off of work. Hop our astronaut out of here. Oh, his helmet! Um, so I'll have Wednesdays and Thursdays off of work, so I'll probably do more of these Lego builds on Wednesdays. Um, while I'm just sort of hanging out at the apartment. Um, I may try and do one on Thursdays. Uh, maybe try and get Ashley to uh, to join me. And we'll do like couples builds or something. Crap. Oh no, come on, there we go. All right, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, let us know. I, I really do want to start streaming more, and if this is something I can do that will, uh, A, be entertaining to you guys, B, uh, give me a reason to build my Lego, and C, give me something to do in my, uh, my off time, I would be more than appreciative. Uh, so thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, whether you watch live or you watch the recording, really do appreciate it. Yeah was a good time and I hope to see you guys uh, not this next not this upcoming Wednesday because I got plans uh, although I might maybe I could try and squeeze one in we'll see um, but at the very least uh, the following Wednesday I should be able to do that and that will be what the the 6th of September so if you guys like it let us know if not let us know I don't want to waste your time or mine so thanks so much for watching guys Take it easy and